Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am standing here today with Aiden Philipchuk of Pride Seeds and we're going to be doing a corn school on physiological maturity in corn and the R6 stage. So welcome Aiden, it is wonderful to have you on again. Thanks, it's great to be here. So we're talking about maturity in corn and you are the expert, I don't know a whole lot about corn. So walk me through exactly what you're looking at for the R6 stage and, and why this is important. Yeah, so R6 occurs like shortly after your silage timing, which we want to get is at R5 and a half. R6 is going to be the end of the reproductive life cycle. When looking at this, we want to look and s grab an ear, pull all that husks back and just break it in half. It's going to be the same kind of thing when you're silage timing, but you just want to check for that milk line. R6 is going to be when the milk line gets all the way down to that kernel tip and it's gonna be black on your kernel tip instead of white. So these ones aren't quite there yet, but that's gonna be your main indicator. Right, so what stage is this at? How much further do we have to go? So right now we're about five, R5 five and a half, so right around silage timing. We can see it's about three quarters or a little bit more on milk line. So we typically say you're gonna have your plants dry down at half of a percent per day in the ideal conditions. So as long as it stays above 10 degrees, your plants are gonna continue drying down. R6 occurs when they're about 30 to 35 percent kernel moisture. Right now these are a little bit higher, I'm going to say about 45, 50, give or take. Okay. So these are going to take a little bit longer, but we're not quite there. It's been a little bit cooler, so it is taking a little bit longer to dry down. But physiological maturity does occur, we can say 50 to 60 days after pollination. So that's when your R1, when your silks come out and you can see those silks turning purple and drying up when pollination has occurred. Okay, why is it important to know R6? And then how does that impact, like if, if you're looking out for that stage, how does that impact when the farmer is going to be combining? Well, it's important to know when your R6 stage occurs because once that happens and that black layer forms, your kernels are gonna be essentially cut off from the rest of the plant. That black layer is gonna seal those kernels in and no more nutrient like starch or moisture is gonna be getting into those kernels. So those plants are physiological mature and the kernels are just gonna start drying down now. So when it is at R6 and you can scout, out, scout it out and see where they're at, you can know, okay, my corn's getting ready to harvest. Now we just wanna see those kernels dry down to as close as we can to 15, 20 percent. Alberta, it's going to be closer to 20. We don't have really the growing season to get lower, but yeah, as dry as you want it, your dry matter or your kernel kernel weights are going to be at the maximum right now, but they're still a little bit wet and they'll just continue drying down. So the moisture on the kernels will go down. So what type of an impact do you see if the farmer goes out and harvests either too early or a little bit too late? What are we looking at on impact on the grain quality? So when it's too early, especially before R6, you're going to see a lot of moisture in those kernels still, which isn't going to be great for yield or quality. Sometimes I know producers say that if it is too early, you, basically your kernels are going to turn to mush as they go through the combine. Not ideal. Yeah. If you harvest it a little bit too late, they'll, they'll dry down nice, but you are at the mercy of the weather. So you could see some lodging or if you have snow or anything like that come through, plants could topple over. Sometimes if the plants are high or dry and die kind of plants, you'll see ears actually start falling off or it could be easier to fall off when they're in the combine. If we see some snow in the forecast, like is it better to get out there and harvest before that snow hits or, you know, where's that line? Well, it's really depends on where your hybrids are at. So if it, as long as it's in physiological maturity, get a test weight done, see what you're at, test moisture on your kernels, see where it's at. And this is also a good time to really know what hybrids you have. Some hybrids have really good standability ratings. Um, if, with, if you do have a high standability rating corn, then you have a little bit more leeway if there is a bit of snow coming. If it's a whole, not a whole lot, there's a good chance you're gonna see pretty good stand 
in there still if it, if it's after snow. So when we're talking about R6 stage, are there any pests or diseases that farmers should be looking for at this stage, you know, to give them an idea of what's coming? Yeah, so this year I've seen a lot of European corn borer. It seems like they're just gaining numbers every year, unfortunately. Um, that's when it's really good to know which hybrid you're growing. Uh, the rib hybrids are gonna protect you against that. So with Pride Seeds, our G2s are gonna have a 5% refuge in bag, and that's just gonna give you some protection for that. If you don't have a rib variety, you could see substantial yield loss if they, depending on how prominent they are in your field. Okay, anything else that we should be looking for? Um, I know in Alberta we don't have that great of disease pressure, but in out in Ontario and our eastern provinces, the tar spot is quite uh, on the loose, and it's not. It's just really affecting our silage yield, silage and grain yields. Right. Is that something that Albertans should maybe be keeping an eye out for, just in case? I mean, it's far away, but it is gaining ground every year a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, our climate is drier, and we don't get that much moisture out moisture and like warm humidity as they do out east so but yeah in Alberta our disease pressure isn't that great right now so maybe something to keep in mind but as of now it's there's no report that's a good thing might be a good reason to get corn in rotation too yeah for yeah. sure well that's great and that was Aiden Philipchik on Real Agriculture